Wesley Page was a magician. Not a great magician, but he managed to make a living. However, sometimes his bookings were the ones that several entertainers had rejected, and he became the agent's last hope. Such a gig was in the little-known Kahabuku Islands, where he was to entertain members of the United Nations contingent. From the very start, things began to go wrong. The beaten-up old plane that was to take him from his hometown of Honolulu was marginally airworthy, and his female assistant flatly refused to go on board. Halfway to their destination, they encountered rough weather, and some of his equipment broke loose and was damaged. This meant his show had to be delayed several days. The commander of the base did find him a replacement for his glamorous assistant, a woman named Muna, who spoke virtually no English and had been a magician's assistant before. She was pretty and was willing, but was extremely difficult to work with. One situation arose when he wanted to repair his vanishing cabinet, from which he intended to make Muna disappear once his show got underway. He told her to strip off the cloth inside so he could repair the broken board behind it, but instead she went inside and stripped off all of her clothes. When she stepped out, there she was with a gorgeous set of tits, a very cute hairy muff, smiling as if to say, is that okay? Things got even more complicated when he was shown his accommodation, which was a single room hut, and Muna turned out to be his live-in housekeeper. If she'd been some old hag, he would have felt more comfortable, but although she was a second-rate magician's assistant, she was fucking attractive and he was getting the hots for her. She served him a rather nice meal in the evening, and when she sat in a corner to watch him eat, he said, come and sit down. She seemed very pleased, and when she sat across him, he tried to explain that she was his equal, and that he was happy to have her by his side. It was perhaps an unfortunate choice of words as Muna immediately came over to share his seat and made dining a little bit awkward. Her warm leg pressing against made his dick rise to the occasion. At bedtime, he chose his words carefully, and patting the bed, he asked her where she was going to sleep. She smiled and leaped into the bed. No, you can't sleep in here, he protested, grasping her by the arm in an attempt to encourage her to move. But Muna responded by pulling his shirt, causing him to fall on top of her. Now, Wesley had been kissed a few times in his life, but nothing like the way that she did it. He tried to resist for a fraction of a second, but that was all he could hold out for. Soon, their tongues were playing touch tag, and his hand was struggling to pull down her sarong in order to feel her tits. Two minutes later at the most, they were both naked and he was sucking her hardened nipples while her hand slid down to feel his dick. She seemed happy with what she found and quickly realigned her body so that he could take it in her mouth. Wesley let out one huge gasp as she slid down his magic wand almost all the way down to his balls. Very slowly, she moved her lips up and down. It made him want to come so bad, but she continued to go slowly up and down, up and down. He grew so desperate, he began to move his ass so that he was fucking her mouth. Muna got the message and not only increased the pace, but gently sucked his nutsack. His nerve endings felt as if they were on fire, and he was taking in great gulps of air as she brought him skillfully to the boil that he could blow his load. As he was laying there gasping, she spit his cum all over the bed, obviously thinking it didn't taste that good. After a few seconds, which he needed to catch his breath, Wesley grabbed hold of her legs laid back on the bed and forced his head between her smooth brown thighs. She gyrated her ass like a hula dancer as he nibbled on the back of her warm, wet cunt and flinging her arms back, she closed her eyes and began to softly whisper. Her vocals became louder and louder as he probed her with his tongue and his finger and it wasn't long before she was yelling something in her native language. When she was gonna come, the folds of her pussy started to vibrate and her whole body began to shake. Oh, fuck, she yelled in perfect English as she clung his hair and she had a long, massive orgasm. It took some time for her to calm down. She just lay back with her eyes shut and took a short, sharp breath. Wesley knelt over her with throbbing cock, just waiting for action. When he thought she was ready, he turned her over so her ass was sticking up in the air. She gave a short scream. Wesley didn't disappoint her. He was dying to come again, and he rammed in so fast and furious while reaching round to grab her gorgeous tits. The old bed was creaking like hell and in danger of collapsing, but he continued until his balls felt as if they were going to explode. For the next three days, the two of them became inseparable, and Wesley was beginning to dread having to fly home and leave her there. After the show, which turned out to be a great success, he tried to find her to tell her that he would apply for her to join him in the States, but she was nowhere to be found. Devastated, he climbed aboard the rickety old plane, thinking that she couldn't face up to say goodbye to him. The six-hour journey back to Honolulu seemed interminable as he thought about her every minute of the trip. Still feeling desperate, he was stowing his gear into the garage when he heard a tapping sound coming from his vanishing cabinet. He was about to reach for the latch when the door burst open, and there she was. She threw her arms around his neck in a heavy South Sea accent and said, I love you. 
how the fuck can you argue with something like that? 